twin films are the phenomena where similar movies are released nearly at the same time. It must be a crushing feeling to be working on a film, and then hear that a rival studio is working on the same one. What do you do in this situation? In my previous video, I gave Hollywood the benefit of the doubt and assumed that the phenomena was not entirely because the studios were copying each other, and we learnt that random events occur at the same time much more often than we would expect. Some people had objections that I let Hollywood off easy and did not mention that competition and the Nash equilibrium is the reason we see so many twin films. And those concerns were rightfully raised. Due to the sheer number of twin films, it is impossible for all of them to be coincidences, even if the coincidences happen more than we think. In order to explain all these examples, we will need more than one idea. Thankfully, game theory has got us covered. Movie studios obviously make more profit if they are the only ones to make a movie, but they will probably still make some profit if there are two. They make no profit if they don't make a movie. With these circumstances, it makes sense that a studio will make every single movie they think is profitable, even if it means they have to copy. Unfortunately, the same logic applies to other studios who might copy them. Say you have two studios that both have an original movie. They each have a choice to make a second movie by copying the other studio. It costs $1 million to make a movie, and each movie topic can make up to $4 million, and is split evenly between the two if they both make the movie. We can put these results in a table. If both studios only make one movie, they each spend $1 million and make $4 million, for $3 million profit each. If one studio decides to copy the other, they take $2 million profit from the other studio, but they spend an additional $1 million giving them $4 million in profit and the other studio $1 million. The other studio is thinking the same thing, so they decide to copy two. Now both studios spend $2 million and make $4 million in total from two movies, meaning $2 million in profit. With this, we can see that both studios would be better off not copying each other, but individually the best option is for the studio to copy. In this situation, both studios would be reluctant to not copy the other in an attempt to reach the better outcome because acting by themselves results in a worse outcome. The situation is called the Nash Equilibrium because neither party can improve this situation if the other stays the same. When they are in the optimal situation, the opposite is true. Either party can get a better outcome if the other stays the same. So it makes sense that the studios copy each other, but wouldn't this mean that every single movie would have a twin since it always makes sense to copy? There are a few reasons this does not happen. For one thing, sometimes studios think different movies will do well, and so they pass when they are shown a script. The other is sometimes studios have exclusive rights over certain properties, meaning that other studios cannot copy even if they wanted to. Perhaps the most important reason is that if there is an unknown number of opportunities to copy in the future, the optimal decision becomes blurry. In the previous example, the studios could copy without fear that the next time the other studio would copy them. In the real world, the studios will exist for many years, and there is always another opportunity to copy. In a tournament where bots play many rounds of the game described in this table, the best performing bots are usually the ones where they employ a strategy of doing whatever their opponent did last round. This idea of retribution is important when discussing one of the most famous pairs of twin films, A Bug's Life and Ants, made by Pixar and DreamWorks respectively. Movies, particularly animated movies, take a long time to produce, and often release dates are moved around frequently. It is rumored that the similarities between Ants and A Bug's Life is because of employees bringing over ideas between studios. But Ants was originally going to be released a year after A Bug's Life, and The Prince of Egypt was originally going to be DreamWorks' first animated film. But Disney decided to release A Bug's Life on the same weekend as The Prince of Egypt. DreamWorks attempted to negotiate, but eventually decided to move the release date of The Prince of Egypt later, and made the release date of Ants a year earlier to compete directly with Disney. Afterwards, animosity between the studios remained high, with many examples of them copying each other. Another example of shifting dates around comes from the DC movie Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and the Marvel movie Captain America Civil War. Civil War was originally scheduled to be released on the same date as Batman v Superman, but the DC movie decided to release early to avoid direct competition. Also, along with Disney's The Jungle Book, released in 2016, Warner Brothers had originally planned on releasing a live-action Jungle Book in October of 2016, but eventually pushed it back to 2018. When it comes to release dates in movies, certain times of the year are better than others, so deciding to change a release date is a big decision with many factors involved. Obviously, releasing earlier than your competition is optimal, but you also want to release at a good time and make sure your film is ready. Sometimes in the case of The Jungle Book, where the release of the movie is still far enough away, a two-year delay is the best option. Regardless of whether Hollywood is guilty or innocent on a particular movie, 
Because of mathematics, we can expect to see many more twin films in the future.